Swallow, camera, real, nurse, wall. I am a territory. Technology confession. I am a micro radio. time stage measure. I'm both kinds of queen.
I'm a regroup talent. Actually, yeah, a couple here actually that were um, they're great. One's from Karen, and she said, "Wow, that's inspiring." Oh my gosh. And then the next one from Kevin said, "This is better than EastEnders." <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you know what that is, but it's a I British think I get the joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's good. Um, an audience for experimental performance. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, there's a good question that came in next from Elizabeth Bridges, and she said, "Do you get nervous knowing that you have a live audience, even when you can't see them?" How does absolutely. that feel? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think it's almost even a little bit more pressure because you can't see them, so you can't rely on the relationship and the 
the vibes and the... Um, yeah, you don't get the active response. Yeah. You can't you feel yeah. the presence. I mean, that's part of the reason that I wanted um, to work with so many people, so that we could all work on each other, work off of each other, um, and not have like a sort of single spectacle for camera. But absolutely, I'm really still very nervous. And your adrenaline still going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's yeah. a bit early to reflect on it. Now. It is. It's um, there's a more practical question here. Mm -hmm. Why did you work with volunteers and not with mm -hmm. paid actors or performers? Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting to think about working with volunteers. It's almost two questions to me because mm -hmm. why sort of try to open source an audience and then. Um, uh, why not sort of trained people or paid people? Um, but for me, I really wanted to sort of work with this open call thing. I've uh, sort of got to this place in my life by sort of existing in this queer economy and network and not being from London and not um, sort of not having a live audience also. I wanted to just, um, I wanted to build a scene within the room. I wanted to create the room, create a stage, create an audience within that space. and. Um, that's all about asking people who want to do it to do it. Mm. So really, um, I think that, yeah. So the volunteering was inherently part of wanting to be in it yeah. and wanting to be part of the room, or make the room as you called it. Because yeah. when we invited you and said, do something in this room, it was a slightly weird proposition maybe, but you it kind is, of have this idea of remaking it with people by occupying it. Yeah. Yeah, there's another one that's just come in from Matt Jones. He says, this must have taken ages to choreograph. Wow. How, how did the process go for you? Matt Maybe Jones. say a little bit, <laughs> say a little bit about what you did this week. <laughs> I think it's amazing that Matt Jones thinks this took a long time to choreograph because actually that was mostly the first time we'd done most of those things in terms of like the verbal speaking and some of the, the more individual um, moves that came out of the group action. Mm. But, um, how did this you is what it looks like. Yes, a diagram, that's good. Um, yeah, it's just pages and pages of notes. But this is, the, I think, the third version of the diagram. Um, and it was all about sort of taking shape in the room. So I really, I just started by the idea of like filling the room, of wanting, um, I wanted the volunteers to, um, to be many and to look back on the single individual who was mm. watching at home on their own device. Um, Did you find it difficult working with a mass of people that you don't know? Because I, I know that's the first yeah. time you've done this. Yeah, it is the first time I did it. And, and I think that when we had this first meeting in the room next door, I think I told them 30 times that it was the first time I'd ever done it. Um, but I think it went really well. I mean, I'm eager to be back in the room with them. People have been um, really kind and supportive, and I think it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, but it's a lot really, of joy. It is it. very hard. Yeah. It's very hard. Um, have to um, also because I've when I've worked with groups before, it's all about sort of um, getting people to figure out together how they want to work together. Mm -hmm. So this is me sort of. Um, although I think in my idea of the project, I thought there'd be room for that, but when mm -hmm. you have three days and a hundred people, I did have to um, be direct, possible. yeah, more than you maybe expected to. Yeah, I think part of me really I had to acknowledge that that was going to happen, but. Um, it's just the way I, I, it's the way I think. You know, I know that I'll do that when it becomes time to do it, but I'm mm. not thinking about it in that way. Um, this, uh, there's another question I think also from Elizabeth Bridges, but what was the significance of having your volunteers self-define as queer or feminist? Mm -hmm. Why did you ask, why was that the setup, the premise? Yeah. Um, yeah, for me, I, I think it's important to say, and this person does say that, that they did self-identify. So it's not like I'm asking for proof of any of these identities, and it's no. not about like being that thing. It's about will be, willing, being willing to perform that role, being willing to be that in this room. Yeah. So, for, you know, I'm I'm interested in queer lives, mm -hmm. and I think especially in these um, sort of in times of economic crisis with rising nationalisms and mm -hmm. conservatisms. It's like. I, um, it's an opportunity to, to focus on and celebrate queer lives and, and queer bodies and think about um, projecting those out, broadcasting those lives and, um, and working with people who sort of like are agitators. How would you define queer, if that's not too big a question? <laughs> would you? Oh, it's too big a question. Uh, no. I mean, because um, you've made that distinction between 
yeah. you are if you say you are. That's what I mean. Is that how you do? <laughs> yeah, for me it really is. Like I've, um, I mean, there's a history to the term, um, but there's also um, an openness to it, which is why it's valuable in a situation like this. Um, it's political to me inherently. The term is. Um, it's not identity based. Um, it doesn't define a specific set of practices. It um, it's, can be a way of thinking, a way of acting, a way of being, and, and that's why I use it. Quickly from me, I was just wondering, because we were talking the other day about the history of mass choreography and that being something that actually is considered in terms of politics, in mm -hmm. terms of totalitarianism, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And actually when I was watching that, the thing that really came through was individuals. So yes, there was a mass of bodies, but actually very, very specific kind of vulnerabilities and differences came through. Mm -hmm. Is that something you were thinking about as you were doing it? Um, I think that I, I think that I hope for that, and I think that the way that we we built the piece together um, with all the with everybody, I think that um, I mean we really didn't rehearse it many times, and I kept like if people kept wanting more and more answers about how to nail it down mm -hmm. and do this or don't do that, I kept being like do what you want to do, like letting the thing have life, yeah. letting the people be alive in the work, mm -hmm. and um, having there certainly be a set of, like a choreographed set of moves, but letting them have some sense of aliveness in that. So, so in that way, I think people, you know, character does come forward, um, but in terms of like sort of the spectacle of mass choreography, you know, we tried to defeat that somehow by having um, the camera's not allowed in the room, and then when the camera comes in the room, it's sort of, it's a different tone of performance, mm -hmm. it's a different kind of thing, and um, in a way that's, um, I, I say that to, to then back up, but to say that the mass choreography for me was about um, building space. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I needed to do it, even though I'd never done it before. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Um. More questions coming in from people on here. Rush the Rhubarb, good name, asked what was being said. Because oh. I was, wanted to ask you about that too, the words clock and block yeah. and other words that were said. Clock, what? block, block. Uh, well, I'm sorry, Rush the Rhubarb, if that was inaudible. Um, it's, um, it's some text that I wrote, uh, developed from vocabulary that I was thinking about while making the project. And um, it's on the floor, on the score on the floor. It says things like regroup talent, uh, territory technology, confession, um, century stage time measure. They were both things about, um, it's just sort of the language that I wanted to have in the room mm -hmm. that then they uh, sort of re-perform in a different kind of chorus outside. Um, there was an amount of humor to that, which I liked. Yeah. So We'd never done that before. I think people really got into <laughs> this it. This is the theme of the evening. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's fun. I mean, it's, I can't sit here and pretend like I know what that's like. You know, it's like I can't wait to see it. Yeah, there's it, a joy to yeah. it, especially when they were leaving the room. Another question's just come in from um, Kirsty Lamb. How did you develop a sequence to represent your ideas? Um, a lot of that sort of, I think that I, in general, my thinking is quite sort of meta, like how I start really big. And then a lot of the details, um, you know, last night before I fell asleep and this morning, and then when I saw somebody come in today, I'm like, maybe you want to try it like this. So um, I started big, I built the floor first. I um, developed the language, I guess, first, then built the floor. Um, and then um, started just to think about pushing back at the walls, um, making Almost different kinds of space. Yeah, I think so. Because it's a very funny moment where they're all squishing against the wall yeah. and they're laughing and laughing. Like. Yeah. They've done that before and never laughed. It's, it's just, <laughs> really? that's the lies. That's nice. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. love that bit. Though. Yeah, me too. Um, Dean Dadurk, um, Dadurk, probably pronounced it wrong, sorry, <laughs> says congratulations from Houston, it's Texas. Oh. <laughs> He's watching. He's giving a special <laughs> wave, I think. He asked about the decision to take the performance out of the room. And yeah. Could you say something about that? Um, I can, because um, in a way, a lot of the things in here are about um, scale, 
um, which is another reason to have so many people and then have different moments of individuation. But um, so once we sort of built the room and then we used the room, we dressed up the camera, um, we sort of performed these different kinds of things in the space, I then wanted to exceed to the space. And it's interesting to think like Turbine Hall is, you know, we're in this small gallery in Turbine Hall, the famously enormous space on, on the earth, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. just right there. So it's nice to see what 105 people in this room looks like um, taking up space somewhere else. Mm. So here we have an intimacy and a proximity and that's one kind of vibe and then out there we um, we take up a different amount of space and we have to take a different form, you know, I am, you know, this is quite formal um, as well as hysterical, but to really take up and see what it, what different form we have to take to be out there. Mm. Good question, um, Dean. Actually, you've partly answered a question from Frankie Bologna um, that was about how many people participated. You said 105 we had in the I end. I think we had 105 or 106, yeah. And after how many minutes did the first leave into the large space? Maybe you don't know. I don't know. You weren't timing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Roughly 10? Because you were planning yeah, for it I to be, you were yeah. imagining it was going to be 10 yeah, minutes. I think that's probably about right, 10, 12, yeah. We've just had a really interesting question coming from Diane Baker, um, particularly interests me in relation to your thoughts about activism and other things within your work. And she says, how does this work relate to the experience of public street protests? And is that a relationship you were thinking about at all? Or um, It certainly does in terms of like, I mean, there's one text back there that says room riot score. Um, there's no way to not use the word occupy in a situation like this. Um, and I don't want to try and not use it. So in that way, it's very relevant. It is about, it certainly is, um, one of the questions was about how do I want to use the space that you've invited me to be in. Yep. Um, and that is about, um, you know, that's part of the choice of, of, of who to work with in this space. Um, and, um, Yes, I, I wouldn't say that the, um, the choreography um, in particular has a, a resonance for what we're seeing in terms of like the kind of street movements mm -hmm. these days, um, but that has been a big part of my life in the last yeah. year and um, is an inspiration. So. Yeah. There's a kind of strangely related question, okay. no, <laughs> into real politics from <laughs> Francesca Godfrey. As a feminist, um, I don't know if you'll answer this. Have you got anything to say to Italian women who've been ridiculed by Berlusconi? That's very specific. Yes, I know. <laughs> it's it's amazing. amazing. Stand up anything for the, for the women of Italy. <laughs> yeah. I am not an expert, um, but I would say um, I would have a hard time listening to him. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah don't that's, listen to him. You probably wouldn't want to go to one of his special parties. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> no, I haven't oh, been dear. invited. Yeah. <laughs> no. We've Thanks got another you. question just come through from Kevin Sedgley. Um, what's on the floor? Is it relevant? And we can't see it. Can you describe more of the elements? I guess with the camera angles and because of the people uh -huh. in here, people probably couldn't see the full way back. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can run through it. Yeah, I did want it to be um, visible in pieces. Um, and I thought that maybe when uh, we were panning out of the room that it would become um, sort of, you'd get more of a sense of it. but. Um, I wish this camera would move, and we would see that we are sitting between a pair of thighs. They're around. Are, they? are yeah. we on this camera? We're sitting in yeah. a crotch. We're sitting in a crotch. Um, yeah, we're sitting in between two spread legs. It's quite comfortable here. There's room for three yeah. people. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> they're approximately five meters big, and there is a, um, another small camera there, which was designating the position that the camera took once it was allowed into the room. Yeah. Um, we have some text here, some syllables of the words that were being spoken, and um, a uh, camera shutter. There are a bunch of um, sort of hand-drawn demarcations of, of spaces that were being taken up, and, um, and a lot of clocks. And then the text around the side yes. that relates to the text in the piece. Yes, the text on the, on the perimeter is, um, as I keep saying, sort of building the room, and that is, again, what was reiterated by mm. people. Um, J.D. Samson wants to know, well, it says Joe and J.D. want to know if the birth chain you know them as well? is the reversal oh. of an act-up die-in. Wow. 
P.S. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, good question. No, I didn't think of it like that, but um, it, yeah. See, that's for the footnotes. Yeah. Okay, we just got time for two more questions. So, uh, can you see one? There's one from Philly Junk. <laughs> Sorry, shouldn't <laughs> laugh at the name. How could intimacy between performance and audience be bridged with live streaming as a new part of the history of performance? Wow, this person is serious. That's a serious <laughs> question. Um, I mean, it probably relates to the whole And it relates to a little comment too. from Frocked Frocked, who's put in capitals, we are a live audience, maybe a protest to our earlier thing, mm -hmm. implying that there wasn't a live audience, but different kind of live yeah. audience. Um, that's true. I think that's the... Um, what was the first question? Oh, sorry. sorry. How can intimacy between performance oh, yeah. and audience be bridged with live streaming as a new part of performance history? Yeah. So I guess how can the intimacy that you'd normally feel within a space where you've got this direct yeah. confrontation yeah. be bridged via the internet and then become mm -hmm. part of a new, like, I guess, realm of performance? Like, yeah. what does that mean? It's hard to think about... Um, I think in that case it's hard to think about, like, the... I think intimacy for me there is then misplaced because mm. it's hard to, the, it's, it's, um, the technology is not something that I think of in terms of that intimacy. So um, I think I had to think about it more uh, conceptually, more formally, and I think that's why I had the camera outside moved the camera inside. Mm. You know, that to me was an acknowledgement of the audience, yeah. of like a kind of formality and then an invitation. So it, it is in the technology for me, it's about the camera. And mm. cameras, of course, have ex like extremely um, uh, important roles in like, you know, history of representation of social movements and things mm. like that. So I think of it more that way. I don't think about, um, and I thought about like you know the flatness of the screen and of the venue of YouTube and and this kind of stuff, but more as um, distribution and networks and you know I've been interested in, in distribution in other ways and so mm. I had to think about it in those terms. Oh, oh. there's a daddy long leg. <laughs> that, did you invite him? <laughs> Everyone's um. invited in here, Catherine. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Okay, we've got one last question from Catherine Barrett, which I might have asked you myself. Would you do this again? Oh my. <laughs> Is this a format that you would like to work with again? Oh, yeah, she's asking, would mm -hmm. you do it again? Oh. Actually, there's one more comment. Oh. You answer that. I have one. to Maybe say, it's, say it's, it's, been an extreme, it's been an extreme challenge, but something I've really enjoyed. Um, I would like... Um, I like pushing up against the limits of the space and thinking about the camera. I like being sort of stuck between like the formality and the hardness of the room and the question of, of, of distribution and other ways of being live. You know, I, I liked those questions. Like they, they engage things I'm already interested in. Um, so in that way, like it's been hard, but it's, it's, been, it's been pretty productive. Good. Good. So we might see more. <laughs> Emily Royston notation. Um, I just maybe we can finish. Thank okay. you for, with just a final uh, comment from Beverly Knowles, who says, "You've well and truly nabbed the live art mantle. That was awesome. Congratulations, Emily wow. Royston. I would like to echo that. Thank yes, you so much. Congratulations. It's been fun. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks to everybody who asked, yeah. asked questions oh. and sent comments. Thanks to everybody who was in it. Yeah. And thanks to Emily for taking on this." challenge and making something great. Thanks. Oh, and thanks, special thanks to Sam, oh, who Sam. helped oh, Sam so much. Yeah. Sam. Yeah. I want to say, um, this is, it's an amazing group of people. I don't think yeah. we could yeah. have gotten any Absolutely. luckier. There feel. was such a joyful energy. Yeah. And now we get to go be together again. <laughs> yeah. Now Yay. let's go and have a drink with you. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Emily. Okay. Turn off my mic.